Listen, you're stranded on an island. No food, no rescue, just you. The silence and the slow realization that you've become both the dinner and the menu. The first days, almost romantic in their simplicity. Your stomach protests, a gentle rebellion really. Nothing you can't handle. You've skipped meals before. This is fine, everything's fine. But here's the thing about starvation that nobody tells you. It's polite. Your body doesn't panic, it doesn't scream. It simply begins the most methodical act of self-consumption ever devised by nature. Executing a protocol so elegant it borders on art, a butcher's precision applied to the architecture of yourself. And the twisted poetry? It doesn't even hurt. Act 1. The glucose gambit, hours 0 to 24. Your body assumes you've merrily forgotten to eat. An oversight. It taps the emergency fund, glucose in your blood, glycogen in your liver. The good stuff, the liquid acids. This face is a cruel joke. You feel hungry, yes, but functional, capable. Your hands shake a little. You get dizzy if you stand too fast. Your stomach grows like it's auditioning for a horror film. But underneath that discomfort, a whisper. Feed me or I'll feed you ignore it. What choice do you have? The crash begins. Act 2. The fat years. Days 2 to 7. Now we're cooking. Your body opens the bolt. The strategic reserve. The fat cells that have been waiting their entire existence for this exact apocalypse. And yes, technically you are losing weight. But not like some Instagram transformation. More like watching a candle melt in real time. You can still walk, think, maybe even crack a joke if someone were there to hear it. But hunger at this stage isn't trying to kill you yet. It's preparing you, marinating the main curse. You're becoming softer, slower, quieter. Like prey that stopped running because running cost too much. The fat burns with the enthusiasm of kindling. Soon, there's nothing left to burn. Act 3. The Muscle Requiem Days 8 to 21. Here's where it gets personal. Your body surveys the wreckage and thinks, well, guess we're doing this. It begins dismantling you piece by piece. Muscle tissue, those expensive proteins you spent years building, gets broken down and converted into glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis. Science has a word for everything, even self-cannibalism. Your brain, that entitled tyrant sitting in his throne of bone demands sugar, only sugar. It doesn't care that extracting it means stripping your arms, your legs, the muscles holding up your organs. It doesn't care that every movement now feels like dragging yourself through concrete. You become weak, clumsy, breathing is labor, walking is negotiation. And here's the kicker, your brain starts lying to you. Depression crashes over you like a wave. Then, inexplicably, euphoria, a false high, a chemical trick to keep you docile while the feast continues. You are tripping without drugs. Suffering without screaming. Protein catabolism, they call it. I call it theft. Your body is a thief, ransacking your own house, selling the furniture, burning the floorboards for warmth. And you? You are still inside, watching it happen, unable to stop the auction. Act 4. The brain betrays. Days 22 to 40. Your brain, the one organ that refused to compromise, that demanded glucose like a king demands tribute, finally runs dry. So your liver, ever the loyal servant, begins producing ketone bodies from whatever fat molecules still exist. Emergency fuel, discount gasoline. It works, barely. And the side effects? Oh, they're spectacular. At first, you might feel clarity, a strange sense, like you've hacked consciousness itself and discovered some hidden enlightenment on the other side of hunger. Then comes the crash, irritability, rage, despair so deep it has its own gravity. And the hallucinations, oh, the hallucinations. Food becomes religion, every crumb, a divine vision. Your brain, that cruel chef, invents banquets you'll never eat, dishes you'll never taste. Smells so vivid, you can feel saliva pooling in your mouth. Famine survivors report dreaming of nothing but food. Endless recursive dreams of eating, chewing, swallowing, waking up to find they've consumed nothing but air. Your mind becomes a prison where every thought is a meal you can't have. Act 5. The final banquet, days 41 plus. There's not much left now. The fat, gone. The muscles collapsed. Now your body begins the final curse. Your vital organs. Your heart beats slower, weaker. 
a tired drum losing rhythm. Your liver and kidneys, those chemical wizards that kept you alive through sheer spite, begin to shut down. Blood pressure drops, body temperature falls. Every cell screams for resources that no longer exist. Multi-organ failure, the doctors call it. But you feel it as a slow fade to black. Vision blurs. Thoughts scatter like startled birds. And then, strangely, mercifully, peace. Witnesses of starvation report that the end isn't violent. It's quiet, serene even. As it after weeks of torture, your body finally finds the off switch and presses it gently. You slip away. Not with a bang, with a whisper. Epilogue, the irony. Dying of hunger isn't quick. It's not a punishment. It's a slow motion banquet where you are the guest of honor and the meal. And the cruelest joke? While well, your body devours itself with methodical precision, your mind keeps playing tricks. Dreaming of tables laden with food. Imagining feasts, tasting fandom flavors. Inside, you're the buffet. Outside, you're starving. Science explains it with equations and medical terminology. Terms like gluconeogenesis and ketoacidosis and autophagy. But strip away the Latin and what you're left with is simple. Extreme hunger is cannibalism with paperwork. Your body doesn't wait for permission. It doesn't ask if you're ready. It just begins, quietly, politely, efficiently, eating you alive from the inside out. And the worst part? You're conscious for almost all of it. So here's the question. How much of yourself are you willing to lose before you are no longer you? Because the body will keep going. It has a protocol, a plan. It just doesn't care if you survive. If you've made it this far, you already know what comes next. Subscribe. We're just getting started.